Yo, what is going on everybody? Shri Kanasa here. So the seven mistakes that I personally made with Google shopping ads or just Google ads in general. Now, one thing a lot of people actually don't know about me personally is that I've struggled a lot with Google ads. And that's simply because in the beginning, I started off my dropshipping journey using Facebook ads. And the transition from Facebook to Google was quite a hassle for me because whatever used to work with Facebook, it was kind of like a complete opposite for Google. And in the journey of the past two years from when I've kind of started off with Google ads up until now, I've learned a lot of things when it comes to Google. Some of the mistakes I will be mentioning in this video are some that I was just recently making, but just figured out solutions to in the past few weeks to the past few months. And some are those specific mistakes when I made as a beginner. So this is one video you're going to actually want to watch until the end, because along with these mistakes, I go over a few things you can do, which can actually help you avoid making any general mistakes with Google ads and finding more success quicker but without wasting any more time let's find out exactly where i went wrong so you don't make those mistakes again so mistake number one would be if you didn't smash that like button no but seriously i would really appreciate it if you take just two seconds to smash that like button okay hopefully you have done that but the real first mistake i want to go over and this is going to kind of start from the basics and go all the way up to the advanced so this is kind of like from the beginning all the way to the end but mistake number one is not setting up the tracking codes and in ensuring that they actually work properly. Now you may be thinking at this specific mistake and saying, huh, is that really a mistake? And unfortunately, it was really a mistake for me and a lot of the students that I currently mentor. This is a, one of the biggest mistakes I see. People think that just because they installed the specific tracking code on their website via the tutorial given by Google that is already set up and it's ready to go. However, there are some other things, small little things that you need to kind of be making sure about the tracking code so that it actually is working properly. And this is literally the biggest mistake you can do and is the easiest mistake to avoid. And that is just not really paying attention to that tracking code. If you just install the Google Chrome extension, Google Tag Manager and double check with that specific extension that the code is indeed working properly on your website, you'll be able to avoid this costly mistake. Now, why is this such a costly mistake and why is it even in on my list? One thing a lot of people fail to realize with Google ads in general is that Google is a data based platform and it requires the data that it gets from the campaigns in order to optimize and start getting you better and better results. It's not simply like Facebook where you supply the campaign with one specific audience and then the next day you'll know whether that product is selling or not with Google. Google is actually constantly trying to figure out who your audience is because again, you're not supplying any type of audience to the campaign. So because of this, it's so important for Google to be able to crawl through your websites perfectly and be able to find out exactly what your specific products are through the SEO optimized keywords so they can actually go out and get your results and then track those results. And that's one thing, just setting up a website properly. Maybe you followed my SEO optimization tutorial or my Google ads tutorial and set that up, but that is only part of the game. The rest of the game actually comes from making sure that that data is getting accurately tracked by Google so that Google can then use that data itself to optimize. One other thing people kind of fail to realize about Google is that Google is a very, very smart platform. Its algorithm has been running for years and years. So it has acquired a lot of data. It knows exactly what your product is and can help you get more results if you just make sure that number one, your website is properly linked with your Google ads account. And number two, your tracking code is working properly. But that's definitely one specific specific mistake which I personally made and it cost me a lot of money in the beginning because I was just running campaigns mindlessly without really knowing if anything was working to only find out later on that I was not getting results because my tracking was not set up properly but be sure that your tracking is set up properly and again I have videos on this you can check out on my channel but let's move on to mistake number two and that is starting testing campaigns at massive bids and thinking that higher bids actually equals more sales now I was actually just recently asked this question by a beginner who was just looking to get started with Google ads and they thought that if you have a high bid or a high budget you will automatically start getting more sales well if you personally thought this as well in the beginning don't worry this was something I thought as well and this actually has proven to be wrong time and time again in the past two years that I've been on Google and to kind of illustrate more into this specific topic as to why just having a massive bid doesn't necessarily work I have pulled up a specific curve image for you guys and this is the shopping efficiency curve. Now, if you look at the y axis right here, this 
vertical line it's the revenue line and this horizontal axis is actually the budget line so if you see in the green it says bidding bandwidth and in here in the red it says overbidding so this bidding bandwidth meaning this green section right here is specifically the section where you want to be bidding in and this green section can be different for your campaigns and mine and every ad account is different so this specific bandwidth can be different simply because you have a lot of different products compared to what i have those prices are different etc but in general every ad account has the specific bandwidth now you kind of want to be in the middle of the specific bandwidth simply because if you start overbidding you're going to start getting marginal improvements in your results but you're going to be spending more and more money unnecessarily and if you bid too low you're going to be getting barely any results and finding this middle area is kind of like a play where you just have to constantly tweak up and down to really figure this section out but that is exactly what overbidding is and that is what you would be doing if you started the testing campaigns at a massive bid of above 60 cents now normally for most drop shipping stores any bid above 60 cents is too much simply because the specific products that you have on your store could range anywhere from 20 dollars all the way up to 100 and especially if you're just like any other drop shipper you don't really want to do high ticket products unless you're selling anything above a thousand dollars i really don't recommend that you put the bid at anything above 60 cents because in the end you would be crossing this green borderline over here and you would be going into this red section which you don't want to be going into because that just means you're wasting money you're barely getting any results and in the end you're not profitable so you're going to stop using google ads so that's one specific mistake i was doing in the beginning and i was simply thinking that a higher bid equals more sales as i showed you guys with that specific chart that is definitely not the case but let's move on to mistake number three and that is stopping campaigns after getting no results or very very inconsistent results for a short period of time specifically five to seven days due to my own emotions now when it comes to business i've constantly come to realize that you should not be making any specific decisions based on how you're feeling at that given day or just how you're feeling in general all of your specific decisions should be based on the specific data that you're seeing and this this is something I really struggled with in the beginning and I sometimes still struggle with this today but what I would constantly do is after five to seven days of a specific testing campaign not getting any results maybe it got zero sales over that five to seven day period I would simply go into my Google Ads account shut off that campaign and restart the campaign because I thought that maybe restarting would kind of jumpstart the campaign and make it start getting sales and sure it did work in the beginning but then I would constantly be facing this same issue over and over again and I came to realize a a lot of things during this time period and one of the main things i realized is that google performs a differently on every single given day that is simply because a lot of factors change with google's algorithm on a daily basis now it's not like facebook where all of a sudden you're facing these inconsistencies for no apparent reason with google there's always a reason to back the specific inconsistency or lack in sales one of the biggest reasons could be that people just stopped searching for the main keyword that your product is related to or just stopped searching for your item that you're selling and general or number two some other competitor came in he started selling the same exact product as you sell for a lower price so now you're barely getting any clicks and that's just going to look bad in google's eyes so what it happens is that google starts showing your campaign less and less these two things are specifically the most important things that usually cause this decline in sales or simply inconsistent results which you want to kind of be paying attention to especially during a period of five to seven days now if you see this happening on a period of 14 to 30 days then that's a bigger problem then maybe you want to stop that campaign definitely but within a short period of time like five to seven days it's definitely not enough to be knowing whether the campaign is the issue or what else is going on and during this time period i highly recommend that you don't make the same mistake i did which is just shutting off campaign after campaign after this specific time period because of my emotions and because i was getting scared of losing money with google you need to have a lot of patience even more than facebook because with facebook as i mentioned earlier you can start a campaign today and by tomorrow you'll know if it's a winner or not with google it can take up to several weeks maybe even a month to know whether a product is really a winning product or not so that's definitely one mistake i was doing that you may want to avoid but let's move on to mistake number four and that is optimizing campaigns too often now again i always say this in my other google ads videos but you should not be optimizing your campaigns less than the three to five maybe even the seven day period because again with google it's a time-based platform it really needs time to kind of gauge the results that it's getting based on what people are searching in the marketplace and again you want to understand 
Every day, somebody else is going to search a specific product. Every day, new people are going to come in and old people are going to leave the market for that given product. So even without you kind of going into the campaign to change stuff around, Google is optimizing the campaign itself. And if you make its life difficult, meaning trying to make too many changes every day or every other day without crossing through to seven day period, it's just going to kind of be like you are running around in a circle to kind of break out of the circle and let your campaign go towards profitability. If it's not profitable yet, you need to just let it do its own thing because again the algorithm itself is very very smart it knows what it's doing as long as you provide it with accurate results so that's definitely one mistake i made a lot in the beginning period which was just constantly optimizing thinking i was doing a good thing but in the end it just came to bite me and i was not profitable for a very long time but let's move on to mistake number five and that is selling specific products that are less than twenty dollars profit now this specific mistake is actually a mistake i was making up until the recent times when i just began to realize that anything below $20 profit margin is not going to give me enough profits to scale profitably and to get enough profits to continue running my dropshipping store. And this is another big misconception a lot of people have, and that is that if you don't sell low ticket items, then you're not going to really be able to sell on Google. And I could not disagree with that more. In fact, nowadays I sell anything above $200 with much more ease compared to something that is less than $30 or $40. And again, it all comes down to kind of SEO optimization. You do how professional your website is, what you're doing with your website in general. So you want to be focusing on those back end things and making sure that you use those SEO optimized keywords so Google can actually find the right audience, which is in the buying mood. But definitely selling something below $20 profit margin is just not going to cut it in 2020 and onwards, because as you guys know, more and more people are jumping onto Google ads from Facebook and these other marketing platforms because of the inconsistencies they're dealing with over there. So you want to kind of step up your own game and only focus on those products, which can get you good results consistently. But let's move on to mistake number six, and that is using different bidding strategies for each different campaign that I launched because they were working for somebody else. Now, for the longest time, this was exactly my problem, and I was always watching YouTube videos on other people launching Google campaigns and trying out these different bidding strategies. Some people would find more success with manual CPC, other with maximized clicks, and I was always getting confused and trying to do both on all of my campaigns, meaning I would alternate each different campaign I launched between between maximize clicks and manual CPC. Well, in the end, that turned out to be the worst strategy because my Google Ads account as a whole was getting very, very confused with what I was supplying it. And it was just causing me to not get any profitable sales. So that was one of the biggest issues and that it was just chasing after what everybody else was doing. It wasn't until I finally decided to just focus on one specific strategy, which had gotten me results in the past, even if they were small results. And that was using just maximize clicks until where I started to really find a good success. So here, the biggest thing you can do is just chase after what everybody else is doing. Maybe you watch my video, I reckon maximize clicks, but it doesn't work for you. Then don't hesitate to just try manual CPC. And if that works, stick to it and don't change it no matter what everybody else says. Because again, if you continuously confuse your Google ads account and your Google ads campaigns by changing around the bidding strategies, it's just not going to be working optimally. And the campaign is just going to get confused between trying to get as many clicks for you as possible, which is what maximize clicks does compared to just choosing a specific type of audience from the overall audience within the marketplace, which is what manual CPC does. So in the end, I recommend that you just stick to one, try both in the beginning, but just when it comes to the results, stick with the one that is getting you the most results. But let's move on to our final and biggest mistake that I was making, and that is focusing only on Google shopping campaigns. Now, if you don't really know how Google ads works, Google ads gives you the ability to launch shopping campaigns, search campaigns, and also YouTube campaigns. One of the biggest specific mistakes I was making, and I still sometimes make it up to this day is just focusing on shopping campaigns and not really paying attention to maybe search campaigns or YouTube campaigns. Now, search campaigns and YouTube campaigns make up a large portion of a lot of profits for a lot of the e-com stores out there. And just focusing on shopping campaigns may be one of the biggest mistakes that you do. Because again, just like any other platform, you can't really be depending on just one specific platform to get you the results. Because tomorrow, if Google Ads decides to just completely shut off the shopping campaigns platform and only run search ads and YouTube ads, then you will be in a big pot. But in addition to that, a lot of people face some kinds of inconsistencies when it comes to Google shopping campaigns, just like you would normally face with us about any other platform. So the best way to kind of deal with that is make sure to have campaigns running 
both for shopping, for search, and for YouTube. And this is the kind of the best way to kind of diversify your traffic and make sure you're consistently getting results. But this was my entire seven mistakes list of what I did wrong with Google Ads. If you found any type of value in this video, smash that like button and smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys next time.